You won't get a word out of me. Not you, not him. Oh, play it tough, eh? Just you wait. We'll take a fingernail or three. That ought to get you singing. I believe I told you not to let anyone in. Unless they had information concerning Philippa Isleheart. This Witcher says he's got just that. Anyone can claim that. We'll start with your pinky nail. Nah. Let's go for your ring finger. This little piggy went to market. But it's not that easy to bring us Triss Merigold. Is that who I hear? Very well. I'll go see her shortly. But first, let us talk. Sit. Sit. Have a drink, Witcher. Sidarian. A 1261 vintage, year of the massacre of Sintra. Ah, stop squirming. <laughs> this little piggy went home! No! No! Kurt, please see why Miss Merigold squeals so convincingly. Perhaps she needs something. Hot irons, for instance. Speaking of metal, this goblet's silver. Making sure I'm not a Doppler. Ah, it's immediately apparent. A professional. I find that refreshing. But to answer your question, one can never be too careful. You'd be surprised how many come here turn to rancid jelly as soon as they grip the goblet. Got a silver sword on my back. That not enough? It proves nothing. Dopplers can change their bodies at will, into materials that look and feel like silver as well. Materials that have none of silver's useful properties, naturally. See, you're an expert on Dopplers. I'd expect a Witcher of all... things... to understand the value of knowing one's enemy. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none! Now, let us talk shop. I shall pay you twice the usual reward for Merigold. Awfully generous. Why? Well, you've turned in your lover. The emotional trauma it must entail. You deserve compensation. Yeah, I've plowed Triss. But what does it matter if you're paying gold for her head? Oh yeah. <laughs> Nearly forgot the mutations strip witches of feelings. No, no more. <laughs> Be brave, dear. Just one more fingernail and we'll move on to the other hand. This little piggy went wee wee wee. Ow! Oh, bitch bit me! Oh, the bitch bites. Let's put a collar on her. Dimeritium ought to calm her down. You surprise me, Geralt. Perhaps we can deal after all. So, you know something about Philippa. But I wager you won't share this information for free. What do you want in return? It's simple. Free Dandelion. A degenerate bird for information about Philippa. Tempting offer, I admit. But I must say no. You see, I have a magnificent execution plan for Dandelion in Oxenford. A breaking wheel, flaying alive, and so forth. 
It should work wonders for the mores of the academic youth and townsfolk. When's this morally instructive spectacle due to take place? When I issue the order, in person. Dandelion will remain in the dungeons beneath Temple Isle until then. So sorry I cannot be of help. Perhaps we can agree different terms. But first, let's see how Miss Marigold fears it. It's grown suspiciously quiet in there. Come. should tend to your wounds. No need. I'm fine. Well, mostly fine. Should heal in time for my wedding. Sorry. Should have gotten you out sooner. Don't apologize. I knew what I was signing up for. How do I say this? That was just a bit premature. What do you mean? Manga said Dandelion's locked up on Temple Isle, dungeon right under the temple. He was planning to execute him in Oxenfurt. Also said they'd only let Dandelion out of his cell once Manga gave the order, in person. Shit. I'm sorry, Geralt. I should have thought it through, but when I saw him, I... After what they subjected you to, no need to explain. He... He'd never have agreed to help us, even if I... I know. Let's not dwell on this. We should think about what to do next. Dandelion's safe for now, though out of reach. We don't stand a chance of breaking him out. Temple Isle's impregnable, and Menga's not likely to order his transfer, or anyone's for that matter. Saw Menga burn a sheet of paper right before we came in here. Could have been something on it that would have helped us. Ah, too late now. So there's no way you could recover the note? Sadly, no. I'm a sorceress, not a miracle worker. Let's search his corpse. Right. Could find something that'll help us. Just his office key in his pockets. Here. Nothing under his belt. Wait. Something sewn in the lining. What is it? The key to a vault. Here. Give it to Dijkstra with my regards. Could you revive him? Maybe. If I actually practiced black magic. Haven't sunken that low just yet. Nothing but dead ends. We'll need to make do. Breaking Dandelion out starting to look like our last option. Geralt, you know me. I'm all for finding solutions. I don't give up easily. But in this case, there's no hope. Not a shred. No one escapes the dungeons beneath the temple, and no one's ever been broken out. Anyone actually tried? They've tried, Geralt. I've tried, to be exact. Shortly before you arrived, it almost cost me my life. Menga's the only one who could have ordered Dandelion's release. Yes. Or someone who looks exactly like him. A Doppler? Mm-hmm. Your old friend Dudu Bybervelt impersonated the halfling merchant. Dandelion claimed he seemed more real than the original. So much so, Vivaldi gave him a loan of several thousand crowns without batting an eye. Yeah, except Dudu's in hiding right now. 
Priscilla might know something, though. Fingers crossed. Listen, there is one other thing I wanted to talk about, but not here, not now. Come by when you have a moment. I'd appreciate it. All right, we need to get out of here. I can't get much of a read on Geralt for a few reasons. One of them is that he's intended to sort of be somewhat emotionless and in his delivery and all that. And I don't know if that really comes across that well with the voice actor they have for this game. But it seems like he's not quite as emotionless as a Witcher is really supposed to be. He has a little bit more of the emotional base that he would have had before the mutations took hold. But the voice actor, or maybe it's the writing or the translation or something like that, seems to have Geralt show disgust or anger a little bit more often than he probably should. That being said, you'd have to be pretty emotionally stunted in order to be able to sit there and have that conversation while you hear what's going on in the other room. Now, of course, I also have to consider that it's up to player choice exactly what happens in that scene first time I played through this game, I had not allowed them to take her into the other room. I I think I might have tried using the... the uh, uh, Well, no, got discovered. Tried using a sign to try, the Axie sign to try and convince them not to take her and not to torture her. And it didn't work and they attacked. I just let that go and, and the mission does in fact play out just fine. You just have to kill a few more people. I'm going to end up having to kill them anyway, because I'm killing them now. But I didn't let them take her into the other room, so I was also spared from having to hear that her screams and the scene that happens later where she kills that, uh, that witch hunter. That was quite some brutality that she went through, and I wonder who it was that she did that for. Because she does... she's seems on the surface to either be doing this for Geralt or for Dandelion. Because he's missing or possibly dead or something like that. But he is also the... possibly the key that will lead them to Ciri. Dandelion knew something about Ciri and I guess he's the only one that can tell us. So, they need to find him. But I mean, not... Thing. I mean, I read one of the books and I saw the TV series, but I don't get the impression from any of that that Triss... Triss wasn't even in the book that I read, but I don't know what kind of relationship Triss and Dandelion have. Although there does seem to be a lot of these characters that Geralt has had interactions with all seem to know each other to some level. I just don't know if she did that for the sake of Dandelion or for the sake of Siri. Maybe both. I don't know. Ekstra is not going to be too happy that we didn't really get the information that we went in here to get. But we did at least find the key. So, maybe that'll shut his weird face up. There's one more thing I want to try and get across before I end this episode. Because I, I kind of want to bring this to a close quick. Because if you've noticed my voice sounding strange, it is because I'm kind of sick. But it'll be a few months probably before this episode uploads. So Come you on, can spare me the well wishes. I'll probably be fine by then. If not, then I've got bigger problems to worry about. Alright, so you have these witch hunters. Which they are, well let's just say, not the kindest group in the world. They're willing to sit there and rather gleefully torture Triss and with so much enthusiasm. And like, I don't know how, what it takes, personally, I've never experienced what it takes to drive a person to be able to take that much pleasure in torturing somebody like that, pulling her fingernails out while she screams in pain. Of course, you can look at the world and see reasons for the way people act here. There's a pretty fleshed out world that this game takes place in, and I don't know what that world is called, but in it has a lot of different warring political factions and all that kind of stuff. But specifically what we're looking at with these witch hunters is this religion of eternal flame. Now religions are almost uniquely capable of self-propagation 
in terms of mind space and all that kind of stuff. Religions spread. They can, they can sort of draw people in. They can be pushed on to other populations. And I guess that falls under the Dawkins uh, memetics concept or theory that a sort of advantageous or a sort of a thought which is thought or memory I guess which is adequate to survive or prone to self-propagation can spread to other people and it was his perspective I think at least that that is the reason why religion had spread now, one of the big things that a religion can spread on is this kind of tribalism that humans sort of fall into by nature, the us versus them. Now, this religion of eternal flame pushes hard on a sort of fear and hatred of people that are capable of using magic. Witchers seem to be barely tolerated, but mages, sorcerers, sorcerers, all that. No, there's no... There is no tolerance for them, and eventually that xenophobia or hatred of the other people turns towards the just non-human populace of Novigrad. Another correlation can probably be made, especially with religious grounds, to, say, Nazi Germany, with its hatred of not just the Jews, but everybody who didn't fit their mold, as well as the, like, the young Turks over in the Ottoman Empire with their hatred of... Um, of the Armenians. I think it may be with, it was Steven Weinberg that said something along the lines of uh, good people can do good things and bad people can do bad things but for a good person to do bad things that takes religion. Now I don't necessarily think that's true. I think it can be a lot of things such as a charismatic leader or um, social strife or economic hardships. Lots of things can push people into doing bad things, but definitely in this world, in the case of the witch hunters, it seems to be this religion. Now, that may have just dug up some sort of underlying fear or hatred or mistrust or resentment against mages. That might be that, but um, who's really to say? I can, at least. This is where we split up. But first, let's burn this shack down. Agreed. We've left too much evidence. Yeah, but I also need to blow off some steam. It's easy to look at what happened here and think of it as a good thing that we showed up. All these witch hunters have been punished. They're dead. Their building is being burnt to the ground. But I don't think this is actually going to solve anything. And in fact, in the long term, it may make things worse. This witch hunter outpost, or whatever you want to call it, in Novigrad was burnt down. Everybody inside of it was slaughtered. Now, on one hand, that reduces the numbers of witch hunters, but it's also going to push the people that are all the witch hunters that didn't survive, that didn't die, that survived, that weren't even here, further and further into their sort of hate-filled perspective. Their people got killed, so suddenly they, they feel ever more justified in their actions. And that may also build sympathy for them with the general public. Now, the public may look at this and say, like, oh, those damn mages are running around burning places down. These witch hunters are the victims here. So it's it seems cathartic, and it seems like a good thing, but... In the end, it's probably not. I mean, things are just going to get worse. You there! Mr. Roven wants a word! Impatient old bastard. What? Nothing. Be there soon. Who do I spy? Why, it's Geralt of Rivia. <sighs> Will you stop following me already? 
I will. As soon as you tell me where my treasure is. Me and Menga didn't see eye to eye. How badly? Badly. I suppose that explains the smoke. My treasure's not in there, is it? Burning with the witch hunters. Didn't see it anywhere. And 20 tons of gold is hard to miss. You mean to say you've come to me empty-handed? First off, you came to me. Second, I do have something in my hand. The key to a vault, founded on Menge. A vault? That I need to find on my own? You've not made things much easier for me. Give me that. That's all you're gonna say? No wry remark, no scintillating joke. <laughs> you want a knee slapper? Fine, I'll tell you one. Ready? You lied to me. Again. What? You knew from the start who robbed me, but you didn't deign to share that information with me. No, I didn't. But I did deign to help you find your treasure, so stop moaning. I jest you not, Geralt. You abused my trust. I can live with that. This time, yes, you'll live. And now, time to settle things. That a threat? Quite the contrary. You helped me, Witcher. So in spite of everything, you've earned your reward. Don't bother. I know what happened to Dandelion. Then take my coin. I always pay my debts, even to liars. And a final humble plea. Don't try to fool me again. Ever. Forgive me, Geralt. That was a mistake. To parley with bandits, make deals. Too late now. King of Beggars will get you supplies and then what? You'll have to pay him. What have I done? Geralt, you must help me! No, I won't. I'm a witcher, not a bodyguard. Precisely! You must find me a bodyguard! Geralt, I beg you! They'll kill me! 